We are live with the continuing the saga of trying to type Sadie from as many different angles as possible, and eventually we might get there. And we're going to be doing the uh, Kersey temperament sort today. With, so many uh, beautiful angles. Yes. <laughs> It's not actually the Kersey Timberman sort of, though. That, see, that's like a registered trademark thing, and you don't want to confuse people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to say that. <laughs> this one is actually called the Personality Finder. That's the actual name of it. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, so I'm Jeff. Even though you can't see me, that's, I'm, I'm, like, in the, in the void, but my voice can still be heard. So I'm making four boxes. Yeah, like four, make make four columns, A, B, C, and D, and then at the end you're gonna total up the four columns to get four numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you each one of the questions, and rather than being one of those things where you just choose one or the other, you're actually gonna rank them from one through four. So. On each one, you're going to put a number in the A and the B and the C and the D. It's just it's going to be you're going to rank them one, two, three, four. So whichever one is your first choice, like the most like you, you actually put one. And then the one that's second like you, you put two and three and then four. So the one that's the least like you, you put four. You gonna do it too, Ben? No, I was just gonna say, um, <laughs> um, Sadie's done squares. Is that okay? I did yeah. my squares more. Than now. However's even. easiest for you to do, sure. Yeah, that'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> the letters in there, so okay. Yeah. Right. So, um, the first one says, "I'd rather study." And then A is arts and crafts, B is literature and humanities, C is business and finance, and D is technology and engineering. So the one that you'd most rather study, you would put a one, and then so on. C was marketing and business, and then B was arts and hum or humanities. A was arts and crafts. B is literature and humanities. C is business and finance, and D is technology and engineering. Okay, and they give the number from one to four, right? Right. Number one is the highest. Four. Okay. So I don't know uh, how you want to do this, Ben. You want her to say her answers as she goes, or? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I was just saying that with some of the questions, I might write some of the like key points in the side. I don't know how. Okay. So I did uh, A one, B three, D uh, C four, D two. All right. Number two says. I feel best about myself when A, I'm graceful in action, B, I'm in rapport with someone, C, I'm rock solid dependable, or D, I exercise my ingenuity. Right. So I have C4, D2. Alright. I, I didn't hear the ones you said, but maybe Ben did. I don't know. They were breaking up for me. Um, 
What I can do... I don't, I don't know what's going on over the video, so I don't want to make you repeat stuff just because I couldn't hear it. Right. <laughs> what, I, what I can do is, like, to help Sadie, I can, like, hold it over here so she can see the questions. You know, because, like, some of the times you have to, like, hold these four things in your head. And so, I'm just trying to uh, uh, switch the You still want me to read them, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> And hopefully this will be clear for Sadie if she like clicks on my square. You, you're getting ahead of now, it though, because I can see number nine. More. Rather study. Okay. One of the arts and crafts. Finest. I think you're on number two, aren't you? I'm on. I feel mm -hmm. best about myself when I'm graceful in action. That's a one. Uh, who, D, I'm in rapport with someone, B, 3, C, 4. Right? I'm, li I'm doing 1 to 4. And then yes. on 3? Yeah. 3 in, says, okay. uh, my mood is most often excited and stimulated, enthusiastic and inspired, cautious and prudent, or calm and detached. One. Okay. Let's be enthusiastic and inspired. Be cautious and prudent. Calm and detached, excited and stimulated. I don't know. Now I, that's an interesting one. So excited and stimulated was your four. Yeah. Are you writing this down? Because I got some difficulties. Oh, there. No, I thought you were. <laughs> oh, there. Okay. Let me do sorry. A. a we'll go back, I'm sorry. Three. Three. Oh. Uh, caution. Calm and detached. C. One. Three. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it to focus. Uh. It was okay. Um, well, hold on. Oh, there we go. There you go. I saw A. A would be three. B. B would be four. B would be three. Okay. Next question. Okay, number four says, I keep coming back to... A, practicing my arts and crafts. B, helping others affirm themselves. C, ensuring that others do right. Or D, figuring out how things work. Jeff, which which book are you taking these questions from? Personology. Uh, brains and careers. Right. Okay. So these ones are, are roughly the same, Sadie. D, others do right. That's four. Do you figure out how things work? Three. Okay. Number five. Coming right down to it, I tend to be A. Practical and opportunistic. B. Compassionate and altruistic. C. Dutiful and diligent. D. Efficient and pragmatic. Six, I respect myself more for A, being bold and adventurous, B, being kind hearted and of goodwill, C, doing good deeds and serving others, D, being autonomous and self sufficient.
think a DC for a three. I'm more inclined seven. Number seven says I'm more inclined to trust A impulses and whims, B intuitions and intimations, C customs and traditions, or D pure reason and formal logic. Number eight, I'm sometimes eager to A, make an impression and have impact, B, lose myself in romantic dreams, C, be a valued and legitimate member, D, achieve a technological breakthrough. I'm sometimes eager to make an impression and have impact. Number Ready for the next one? Okay. I am mm -hmm. in a lifelong search for more. A. Thrills and adventures. B. Self understanding. C. Safety and security. D. Efficient methods of operation. Everyone's in a search for all of these. I guess I'll just put them in order. <laughs> yeah. What is most important? At least this isn't make, asking you to make a forced choice. <laughs> yeah, I like the way, I like the ranking system actually. There we go. Because it not only tells you like your strongest suit, it also says kind of what your secondary and your third and your weakest are too. Yeah. Yeah. It shows the person more in the round. Mm-hmm. methods properly. Okay. Number ten. In facing the future. I guess that A. Something useful will turn up. B. It's best to believe deeply in something. C. My motto is be prepared. Or D. It's best to keep a wary eye. Yeah, so this is a little bit different from what Jeff said, but it's pretty much the same. So I think the one that was most different was what did you say, Jeff, for B? B, it's best to believe deeply in something. Right. D, it's best to believe in something. And best to keep a weary eye. It equals innate goodness. Yeah, um, if, if I, uh, I could switch over. I, it, the, the exact same question might be in personology, because I've got that book as well. 
what, what what grid do you have? Oh well, I was going that one. I was going off. Please understand me too. You see, you, you're doing the questions from. Uh, oh, you're oh yeah, that's it. Yes, it is exactly the same. But, uh, I should have used this one. Sorry, Sadie. This one has um, there. What you said is best to believe in something deeply. Is that pretty much the same as yours, Jeff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll try and. There we go. Be prepared. It's best to keep a wary eye. Yeah, this is the character finder. Hey, something useful or something will turn up. Okay. Okay, number 11. If it were possible, I'd like to become A, an artistic virtuoso, B, a wise prophet, C, a chief executive, or D, an engineering genius. My actual top choice on that would be Artistic Virtuoso. Hey, me too. What a surprise. I do best in a job working with A. Steering tools and equipment B. Human resources development C. Material and services or D. Structures and functions Okay. 13. As a guide to action, I look primarily at A. Immediate advantages B. Future possibilities C. Past experience or D. Necessary and sufficient conditions Yeah, there's only 16 questions. 
think. Yep, three more. Okay, good. We're good. All right, 14 says, I'm most self-confident when I'm A, adaptable and flexible, B, genuine and authentic, C, honorable and respectable, or D, strong-willed and resolute. I appreciate it when others A. Surprise me with generosity B. Recognize my true self C. Express their gratitude D. Listen to my rationale Appreciate all four of those things, so I guess I'm gonna rate them. <laughs> What's that? Uh, six, so last one, 16. Okay. When talking about misfortune, A, I usually laugh it off, B, I often wonder why, C, I try to make the best of it, D, I consider it in its context. I think if somebody like memorized this test, it will give them quite a few cues for working out someone's temperament. Yep. Mm. Uh, I said if there, if you were going to take just one question and use it as the basis, it would be number nine because that really sort of boils it all down to what's most important. But yeah, safety and security. I mean. What? Uh, Rennie Barron even calls the SJ as security seekers. Yeah. So, now that you've done all that, then you just have to add up your scores in each of oh. the A, oh. B, C, and D. So, yeah, Sadie, did you, have you ranked number 16? Yes. Right, then. I'll give my... Uh, my when hand best. No. When you know what, uh, when you've added up your answers, then you can tell me what your lowest number is, or which letter it's by, and I'll tell you what your, according to this, your strongest temperament is, and then second place, and so on. Okay. Now,
Okay, my lowest one is B. B. Ooh. And what, what number did you get for that? 33. Okay. B is idealist. All right, what's your second lowest number? A. A is for artisan. What number was, I mean, what was your total for that? 37. Okay, so pretty close, pretty close yeah. All right, what about the, the next one? D. D is rational. And then C. C is guardian. So you got 33 for uh, B, Sadie, is that correct? Yeah, and that's an NF, right? Yeah. yeah. 33 for that, 37 for artisan. SP. Uh, 42 for D. And I got 49 for C. So I, I'm thinking C is NT. Uh, C is guardian. D is, ra D is rational. Okay. NT. Right. So you got 42 for D. Is that correct? What did you get for C? Mm -hmm. 49. 49 for C? Mm-hmm. Right, that's uh, Guardian. So your highest score was for Guardian, then Rational, then Artisan, then Idealist. Yep, so Idealist is is uh, your primary temperament according to this, but you have a uh, strong artisan side secondarily. So first I'm an NF. Yep. Oh yes, because it's reversed. That's right. F. So the smallest number, Left. that's the strongest. Is that correct, Jeff? Yes. Right. Now, to me, with with the artisan being second, what would that that what that would suggest to me is more NFJ than NFP, you know, because the NFJ is value extroverted sensor. And see, I would think NFP is because SPs, you know, artisans are SP, so it's more that way. So it, it's just that. Uh, like I say, if you compare INFJ with NFP, INFJs tend to be a bit more. Uh, well, the, like for instance, if, if you compare their jewels, like INFJ fancies ESTP, whereas uh, INFP fancies ESTJ. Some, of them. Some of them do. In general. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know if how. I don't know how well that holds true. So. But we asked. We asked Dave. Uh, he, he said he couldn't think of an INFP ESTP part, uh, marriage. <laughs> well, just because he can't think of any doesn't mean there aren't any. Yeah, well, okay. See, but it's, tough, be, it's yeah. tough because there's a lot less INFPs, so it's hard for... Okay. Yeah, but in general, yeah, ES, ESTPs tend to scare away INFPs. And, and so, but we're not. But I'm not talking about like when I say, uh, you know, if your NF has a strong SP side, then they, you know, that would be closer to NFP. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily romantic attraction. Oh no, I was their own personality. No, no, I, I was just saying that based on uh, Sadie's preference for. Uh, what I mean is, if like an INFP was taking this test, I think their artisan score would be lower than if an INFJ is taking this test. I think I think it would depend on sort of the mode they were in, because like I said, I, I know an INFJ that she sort of had this alternate personality that was an SP. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, if she was in that mode, she'd be more likely to score higher than SP. Oh yeah, but then she, you know, so it's hard to tell. 
It's it's like when EJ indeed talks about INFJs with um, an SP side. Now, um, now the INFJ we know that doesn't really have that is Crystal. She doesn't really have that. You see what I, what I the thing is I look at it as if an INFJ or an ENFJ for that matter, the, that SP side is going to be like the shadow of them. Mm. Not like not like their second suit, you know. So that's yeah. what I think, anyway. Um, if if you have if you have that strong an uh, an artist in secondary, then I think it's more likely uh, to be NFP than NFJ. Oh, interesting. Because you're going with the perceiving thing. Yeah. Because right. you're closer to you know closer to artisans, which all are perceivers. That's fair enough. So. Um, so could I be an ENFP? Sure. But, I've never heard that typing, but new one, yeah. right? Jeff, do you think idealists are the ones that are like the least certain of their type? Yeah. And, and, and NFPs especially, even more so. So like, the more somebody switches types, the more likely they're an NFP. Because <laughs> they seem to be the ones the least satisfied with their type, because they always say, but wait a minute, what if I'm really this other thing? It's like they can't, they're never satisfied. Like, with Rachel, well, there, I almost yeah, said Rachel's, that was her name. You typed to Rachel also scored ENFP on the MBTI, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Victor typed to as INFJ, uh, Jack and I typed to as ISFJ, but, but she, she didn't have she didn't have a single J answer on the test. Yeah. <laughs> but but well, she was inebriated during that test. She said. Um, well, I told she asked me ahead of time about that, and I said, oh, if you are a little bit. You know, but not like a lot, because if it's a lot, then it, then it could change, you know, significantly. Yeah. Oh, anyway, she told me some stuff in private about how she she used to fit the intertype relations of INFJ more than she does now. Okay. So what do you want to talk about, Sadie? <laughs> right. Um, so. A lot of those questions were really close to me. Yeah. So that was what was with these tests. I'm real. I'm really fascinated with them because you literally just have to be in a little bit of a different mood, and it doesn't have to be that much different, but it could be, and that's. You know. Yeah, and see, that's the difference. That, that, the, that's the, the difference to me is that, and I don't know, part of it could be age with some people, and some of it is difference in temperament, because I, there is no mood I can be in that I'm going to score NF on that test. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm no. being honest. Uh,. They're actually like the the only I think the only one that I could score based on a different mood is I could possibly end up guardian, but that would still be kind of a stretch. <laughs> I like how you had a sigh before you said that, Jeff. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is because I, there are areas where I relate to guardians. I don't relate. Like I go through this. Okay. Don't relate to the business and finance thing, yeah, but in, in, mostly. But I, I see. That's the thing is, I, I in the first question I'd rather study. I'd rather not study. Period. Um, so, <laughs> but I don't want to study business and finance. But I have had dreams about owning my own business sometimes. So there's that. Um, I like to be seen as dependable. So that I, I relate to. Um, I also do relate to the in rapport with someone though. Um, don't care about ingenuity at all. Um, mood is most often. Uh, 
That one could be A or B. So I, I, I could, I could score, you know, idealist on that one. I keep coming back to, uh, yeah, I'm not really about uh, affirming anybody or ensuring that others do right. Don't care about that. Sometimes care about how things work. But overall, the arts and crafts is going to win on that, no matter what kind of mood I'm in. Um, what I think the best thing to do, and actually what Chris Montoya said this is what he does, is he gives people the profiles and asks them to read the profiles and really think about what is the best match for you. And if you've got good I, profiles, I, I think that works. What's that? Big time. And I... I think I have SP tendencies. I don't know if that makes me an NFP, but that would be interesting. I'd have to meet other NFPs. I get along with them very well whenever I meet um, an INFP. Well, that's what, I feel um, like they get along with everyone. Yeah, that, that's uh, my son, you know, in his drive-by typings. He, he said you were you seemed to be an NFP, you know, way back months ago when he talked to you. Um, Hannah, has, has bias, so. yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hannah has mentioned in other Hangouts that she's had her genome uh, done, and so it, you might, if you did your genome, said it might say, "Oh, you have a gene that makes you a bit more for dopamine production," because dopamine is very much connected with the SP temperament, because when they're in the zone, yeah. dopamine's released. Cause... Because we're all dopes. <laughs> well, that's how I do remember it. Actually, the code is the dopey SPs. That's how I remember it, that it's uh -huh. dopey SPs. Well, well, like Dave himself, when he did the... Uh, I forgot what it was called, but he was doing... like it was in. He was helping his dad back when they were doing the... Working on the Dark Escape thing or whatever, and he came out like with the, uh, the, the names for... I don't know what you call it. Is it an acronym where you have like the letters, but it but they stand for words. I forgot yeah, what that's I, called, but but anyway, yeah. like it was um, SJs was serious jerks. SP was sneaky punks. <laughs> NF was nebulous flakes. <laughs> and I forgot what NT was. <laughs> nerdy, nerdy, nerdy something, but I can't remember now. Oh, nebulous fairies. <laughs> yeah. That test was I fun. Forgot. I hate doing that. Can I get a copy of that test? Oh yeah. Oh, copy. Yeah. Yeah, I could. I could scan it. I don't know. Jeff has yeah, a scan. Yeah, Ben will hook you up. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'll scan it. So I we'll like how Ben just cut me off, though, when I was, like, going through talking about myself. He's just like, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, no. I have something for you. Oh, wow. Like that? Oh, I'm that's, such an NF. That's awesome. That actually I'm looks great so on camera. It looks like Nemo. I love Nemo. I know. I love this. And it go. there's so much of it, like, for hours. And it like fill up a room. It's amazing. Yeah. So after looking at the the hormones, like you, you can have like uh, like for instance, it looks like Hannah might be an ENFJ, but there's something about her dopamine system where she gets more scared than the average oh. ENFJ. And so she becomes like a more introverted version of one, because she mentioned that in her genetic reports. Can I work for you? Her what or report? Like, Come here. Oh, she went to twenty three and me, and she had her genome analyzed. I don't know what that means. Genome, her DNA. Her whole DNA code was analyzed. Okay. You could get this ninety nine dollars, I think. You can have your own, <laughs> oh, your whole genome analyzed. If so I had ninety nine dollars, I would spend it on something else. Or someone else. Yeah. But of course, if I was where Sadie is right now, 
then I would just get myself a bubble fish too, and we would just like bubble up the whole place. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what we could do now is, well, I could like uh, get the next oh, hangout. Have, have then, you ever been yeah. to like one of those? Like, is like a dance where it's like they put the bubbles everywhere. Like an eighties party or something. I don't I don't know if it's eighties or not, but like there's like dance floors where they like to just like put bubbles everywhere. Yeah, party. Okay. So have you sorry? Ha, have you done that? You know, I just recently discovered my obsession with bubbles. I was going down the street and then it had bubble makers and just when mm -hmm. I feel even blue gray below them. <laughs> Okay, so I guess that's I a no. What's a no? What was, I thought I answered the question. Well, I was Sorry. asking if you'd ever been to, like, one of those places. Oh, I don't like think I've ever. Like a bubble dance. Yeah, or... no. That'd be fun. Okay. Yeah, That'd I haven't cool. either, but I want to. I've been to a foam to. one. Well, yeah, well, that's close. Well, close you know what? My birthday party will invite you, and you can go to a party that's got bubbles. But it'll be the 80s party, so it'll be like an 80s. Well, great. I love the 80s. <laughs> the 80s were the best. Trust oh. me, I was there. I like them as well. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm five months older than Jeff. Yeah, yeah. He's. That's why he's wow. wiser than me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm young and innocent. Okay, so <laughs> my folks will be another hangout moments away. Oh boy.